How to eat your silver. Bon appétit. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. No, I didn't actually eat my silver, but today in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can eat your silver. Today I went to Tim's with Little Stacks and we picked up some really sweet silver. Or actually, Little Stacks picked up some silver. And while we were there, I was listening to a gentleman that was also purchasing some silver. And he said, Tim, I bought a huge amount of American Silver Eagles back in March for $16 each. A bunch of these tubes, he said, piles of them. And he said, I'm, I'm considering selling them when the price goes a little bit higher. I chimed in, wow, well done, dude. <laughs> $16 an ounce. That, that was a great pi, uh, price point. It's a great time to jump in when everything was going sideways. Awesome. But in my mind, I was thinking, sell your silver. Really? For what? This stuff? I don't know. <laughs> That's a declining government liability, a Federal Reserve note for which our central bank has all but guaranteed is going to be worth less every day you keep it. So that was rolling around in my head. And you know, who knows? Maybe he maybe, maybe had you know great plans. You know, uh, Maybe he was going to pay off some debt. I don't know. That would make some sense, right? Maybe he was going to use it to buy more precious metals. You know, late, Later on, he actually said, uh, that he was interested in exchanging some of his silver for gold. So maybe that was factoring in. I don't know. But it, it did make me think. You know, back when I, um, uh, I did that uh, uh, tailgate exchange, remember that when I, you know, took some of my fiat and, and I bought a couple quarter ounce gold maples in that tube of, uh, of uh, Canadian maple leaves? That was awesome. And I remember uh, meeting up with him and, and I asked him why. He was selling, you know, the silver and the gold. And he said that he was, well, let him say it. There's only one thing he'd sell silver or gold for in my mind, and it's okay. something better. And in something my mind, right. it's going to be land. And I'm looking for that mm. piece of property right now, and I'm a farmer, and I'm mm -hmm. ready to make that move. And without land, I can't do much. Right, you're not exchanging your gold and silver for fiat currency. You're actually getting another asset that is tangible, that is important to have. Yep. Uh, that's great for prepping. It's great for you know providing food. You're a farmer. Yeah, exactly. I mean that's huge, man. So that's super important to me. So I gotta right. make that move. Yeah. He said it was the only reason for him to sell his precious metals for. Uh, to help him get an asset uh, of greater value to him. And that made sense to me. And that brings us to that oft stated, usually snide comment, you can't eat silver. Well, yeah. <laughs> they are right, okay? Y you could swallow this stuff uh, but I wouldn't advise it. And 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 yes, silver has amazing properties <laughs> as a precious metal. But eating is uh, the nutrition, I should say, is is not one of them. Uh, plus, it leaves a, a terrible metallic taste in your mouth. <laughs> in all seriousness, the argument goes like this: Yankee, when the SHTF scenario you keep talking about comes about, you're not going to find anyone wanting that silver or gold of yours. You really think that someone who's starving to death is going to trade a pound of rice for a pound of silver or gold? No. Mm -mm. It's all about the beans, bullets, and band-aids, bro. Get with the program. <laughs> well, good point. And I understand that argument. 
I, I understand it well. I, I actually started prepping many years ago in a way that had nothing to do with precious metals. We're talking food, water, shelter, protection, land, electricity, heat supplies, all that stuff. The list is long. And those were very important to me. Actually, more important than precious metals. However, precious metals are an important prep. You know, I've talked about this analogy before, and I apologize if some of you have already heard it, but there's some new people to my channel. So let me just tell you about the auto or car crash analogy. Okay, most of you out there, I hope, have some sort of health insurance. If you're in a, an automobile and you're cruising along and you, you get your family with you and, and, and all of a sudden, out of blue, somebody cuts in front of you and you go smacking right into them. It's a terrible crash. You're knocked unconscious. And when you come to, the first thing you think of is your insurance policy. No, of course not. <laughs> it's not the first thing you think of. The first thing you think of is, oh my goodness, am I dying, right? You, you look, if you can, down at yourself. You start feeling, I, I, am I okay? What just happened? You know, you're, you're concerned about your well-being. Then, the people that are in the car, your, your significant other may be next to you or, or maybe some others in the back. Are they okay? And then the you know, emergency vehicles show up. Hopefully the paramedics are there quickly. They get you out. They put you on a stretcher. They get you into an ambulance. And on the way to the hospital, if you're lucid, if you are conscious, you start thinking about that health insurance, don't you? No, no, of course not. You're just glad to be alive. You're, you're thinking about the most basic of needs. You know, you're, you're getting your IV, they're checking your vitals. And until you get to the hospital, all you're thinking about is, oh my word, am I gonna make it? What's wrong with me? And the pain that you may be experiencing. You're in the hospital. They're doing all kinds of checks, x-rays, MRIs, whatever. And you're thinking, what about my insurance? No, probably not. Not the first day. You're still focused on your health and well-being and, of course, others. Those are the priorities in your life. Okay, second day, third day, maybe it's you, maybe it's your family member or somebody else that comes alongside. Somewhere, somebody starts thinking about the insurance, right? That's when it matters. Does it matter right away? No. Does it matter Later, yes, absolutely. When an SHTF situation occurs, you're going to be thinking about safety, food, and water. You can only live about three days without water. You can only live about 30 days without food. And, you know, those are the priorities, keeping your family safe. But I still contend that you can eat your silver. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Maybe not with a with a spoon, but you can. How? Indirectly. I believe exchanging silver and to a lesser degree gold for food is a distinct future state possibility. Don't believe me? That's fine. But don't be fooled into thinking that since we've not personally experience such a scenario here in the United States, it can't happen. Or, I don't know, another place like uh, Venezuela. Well, shoot, they're not doing it, right, Yankee? It's impossible, see? No. First of all, Venezuelans have actually sought out silver, and they have actually begun to use it in barter, or at least some of their jewelry and such. Second, they are largely an agrarian society. They know how to grow their own food. They know how to survive. Frankly, I think they know how to survive better than we would as Americans. And third, the Bolivar, <laughs> that's not the reserve currency of the world. If, or should I say, when the US dollar collapses and social upheaval like we have never seen before comes, I think it's going to transform the world because it's the dollar. It will have global impact that we've never witnessed before. It would have to, 
you know, we'd have to go back to ancient times, again, agrarian societies, to just catch a glimpse of what it could be like. So you don't have to believe it, all right? You don't have to, you know, be a prepper stacker like Yankee, but I do believe the likelihood of barter, silver, and to a lesser extent, gold, could definitely happen months after a collapse, maybe during the recovery of an SHTF scenario. I think it's likely. And, you know, I've actually seen a little glimpse of what it might look like. This is from Oregon back in 2011. <laughs> Two silver dimes would buy you a gallon of gas. Yep, that's right. Two rosies. One, two. Two Roosevelt uh, silver dimes uh, contain 0.14468 troy ounces of silver. And at just shy of $27 per ounce, I think we're at, uh, or at least as of the making of this video, we're just under $27 an ounce. These two dimes could snag you a gallon of petrol priced at $3.60 a gallon. I don't know how much gases we're at. Mine's around three. I know there's some places with taxes and stuff, New Jersey, New York, closer uh, to Yankee, that, that probably are around $3.60, maybe even higher. But two dimes, at least at this gas station back in 2011. Could it, could it happen again? Sure, I think it could. You know, that station owner in Oregon said he would continue to allow you know, paper money to buy gas until it reached $5 per gallon. In other words, when inflation got out of control. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so I think, yes, it could come back. And I think it could actually spread to other stations. Could it extend to other services and goods? Like food. Yes. I'd believe that, especially if our just-in-time supply chain breaks down. We just got a, 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 a foretaste of that during this uh, crisis this year. And while I'm, I'm probably going to get mocked to some degree in the comments below, I'm fine with that. Because I contend that we should at least partially insure ourselves against that possibility. Remember, I do prep... Um, over six months worth of food for myself and my family. So I'm not only looking at this stuff, the exchange and barter of, you know, bullion for bread here. I, I'm, I'm looking at real food preps as well. So anyways, consider this, right? Can you eat silver? Yeah, well, indirectly you can. <laughs> so prep on people, stack on my friends, and thanks for watching. And I hope your day is A-OK. -okay. I wonder what a Kennedy half dollar tastes like.